I did want to just talk a little bit about Island Yacht Club uh, for the benefit of people that may have just come here recently um, or may have been like, okay, well, I, we know that there were a big change happened in terms of um, the digital side. Where did that come from? Why did we launch this project to, to revamp the website, email newsletters and all that good stuff? Um, so just a quick bit of history here. Uh, once upon a time, we had a clubhouse and life was wonderful. Um, that said, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, Island Yacht Club is 52 years old uh, now as of this year. Um, it's been through a lot of peaks and troughs. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, the impression I get. Um, there's a really cool pamphlet, by the way, called On My Watch. I know there's a couple of copies floating around, but um, I'll make sure that I loan you a copy or at least put one in our shed or something like that so that uh, you guys can get a bit of a sense for the trials and tribulations uh, of the club when it had a clubhouse. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, you get a lot of the older, like the members, I'm just going to say older members, but that, that, that's not a reflection on their age. It's more a reflection on their tenure um, that, you know, are really begging for clubhouse life, you know, and I have to admit, many things were much easier when we had a clubhouse. However, uh, you know, the membership did expand and contract and expand and contracted. There were good years and bad years. And, you know, it was one of those things where at the end of the day, uh, I think it, we could keep a lot of what was happening in the club uh, running because when you have people in a clubhouse, you've always got people that you could sort of pull aside and say, hey, can you sit down and stuff envelopes for me? Uh, hey, can you help sign membership cards? Hey, can you do this thing? And so, you know, an example of like one of those mass events that, you know, you kind of really need a clubhouse for uh, is something like the crab feed, which is what I've pictured here. Um, that would be a multi-day preparation uh, with many, many volunteers involved. And as someone who was involved in two crab feeds, a lot of it was just being in the clubhouse and someone basically putting a mop in your hand and saying, go, go for gold, you know, absolutely go for gold. So, you know, that is a model of community in its own right. The fact that, you know, people are just sort of there and, um, you know, we all are committed to making the club happen. But, you know, a lot of it is just us being there, not necessarily signing up for something specific, a role specifically. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, the other thing to note is that, um, you know, I mentioned a, a clubhouse. A clubhouse is a good prospect if you're all based in Alameda or somewhere relatively close by as well. Um, so, you know, membership was very SF Bay area and Alameda centric. Um and, you know, for a good 50 years, like, yes, there'll be people that would say that, hey, we're coming in from Arinda or San Carlos. Well, you guys are still very much, you know, centered around a clubhouse as such. None of you guys are coming from Los Angeles or Alaska or anything like that. Um, and, you know, by all means, this is, this is, I mentioned this in particular because this is a sort of where we still get a lot of our norms from, including the idea of having the membership by calendar year it's it's around this idea that we're a community where we all gather together uh, again it had its trials and tribulations but you know it, something kept it going obviously for 50 years so as you might know uh our clubhouse was very much uh well our existence was very much tied um to being alameda marina marina it still is we still host our racing there a uh, terrific place um, you know, and of course, it's our desire to stay Alameda centric. However, now we do have to have a more distributed model. Um, on the upside, it means that we don't necessarily have to be centered on Alameda specifically. Um, you know, we're still running many of the same programs as we did before, but we have people who have their residential address as being Armed Forces of the Pacific. Um, so in Hawaii somewhere. <laughs> um, and then we also have people who are residing down in Mexico who are part of Island Yacht Club. 
And then we have people on the East Coast. And, you know, a lot of that is is pretty epic. It's it's due to the fact that we've now had to transition to a model which is uh, very much online. Um, it's, as a result, much more affordable. And therefore, you know, we've managed to attract a very different, uh, much more diverse membership than we had previously. Um, the thing is, people do come to yacht clubs because they are looking for a sense of connection. And without a clubhouse, we, you know, have had to at least think that through, you know, quite significantly. How do we create these gatherings, um, you know, without having necessarily a physical location? And, you know, a lot of the genesis for us pouring a lot of cycles into thinking about this problem came from basically having to face this issue during the pandemic. Uh, when we closed up shop at the clubhouse, we also had the onset of COVID in 2020. Um, you know, at that time, a lot of clubs literally just went on ice. They just paused and many stayed that way for two years. You know, that didn't make people sense a uh, want for, for connection go away. So, you know, Island Yacht Club started throwing things like webinars where we could actually get together like this and have a round of introductions and then talk about something we're passionate about, something, you know, sailing. Uh, you know, that was really how we sustained things for 2020, 2021. Uh, the kind of cool uh, side effect was that of that was that these were th events over Zoom. Um, they were things that, you know, people could sign up for fairly easily. We could promote them very easily on Facebook as well. And so, you know, we were able to really drive this sense of connection and create this sense of community, right, by, you know, creating these events that people could log into remotely um, and be part of without necessarily having to go to a physical location. And so, you know, things really did snowball from there. Um, now it seems that, you know, in a way, like we've had to evolve very, very quickly because, you know, it's impossible now. It's physically impossible to issue even things like membership cards um, the way that we used to. I still have my IYC membership card from 2020 uh, and that, you know, was issued, it was like a laminated card, piece of cardboard that was had my name handwritten on it and somebody's signature on it. Um, and that might have been easy to do when I went to a clubhouse or maybe there were just a couple of members. But I remember when I first took over memberships and we had just started this digital model and people had started joining the club by signing up, I had something like I just let it pile up for a while. And all of a sudden I had this prospect where I had like 36 <coughs> membership cards to issue and I have terrible penmanship. Uh, and, you know, all of a sudden I had to like cut these templates and write names and I started using the printer and, but I was still cutting things manually and any which way, I mean, in the last month we have issued 83 membership cards and the only way we've been able to do that is by really just sort of having to rethink this process entirely so um that's why we come to here and now uh, i'm going to pause for a second before i go into uh talking about the software stuff and all the techie stuff uh, does anybody have any questions about where island yacht club has come and this slide in particular, I mean, why we've had to evolve like we have. I have one question for you. I think, um, would you say that since um, what, January, 2020, mm -hmm. that your membership has in terms of now, now that we're in 2022, that your membership has regained where it was, uh, grown exponentially, um, decreased, what has happened before pre-pandemic to now? Uh, so, Grown exponentially is the closest thing I could yeah. I could describe it by. Okay. Um, so when we started at the beginning of the pandemic, we had 18 paying members. Uh, and that was still when we were pre everything I'm going to show you here. Like we're very much in this model where it was like $400 a year to have access to a clubhouse. 
And then we realized very quickly that $400 wasn't going to fly uh, for a digital club. So, but there was a, there was a period where we entered the year and people had paid $400 and only 18 people did that. Um, yeah. So now, no, I think about 273, if I look at member space, uh, for this calendar year, and we're rolling into the new calendar year so far, about 83 people have renewed, um, for 2023. And we haven't even really started to to do the membership drive side of things. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. You really have a different. You really have a different dynamic than a lot of others. You've lost your house. So, yes. Yeah. Yes, but you know, I would like to. You know, there've been clubs like San Jose Sailing Club who have been doing this for a lot longer than us. Yeah. Uh, very much the paper club, but still very much rooted in doing activities like cruise outs in the same way as we do racing. Yeah. Um, you know, very much the the things that physical clubs pride themselves on, but take them to a setting where, you know, without a clubhouse or necessarily a centralized model, um, we still made the things work, but we have to do things very differently, obviously. All right, so um, I'm going to just do a quick uh, a quick review, though. I mean, before nice. we start talking about um, how it all works with data and all that kind of thing, um, I just wanted to cap off the sort of introduction to Island Yacht Club side of things by um, sharing with you the member survey that Prov did recently. I just wanted to share a couple of factoids with you. Uh, because I think it's it's best to have our membership speak to why uh, they're with the club. <clears throat> so first of all, this is just, I'm, I'm very happy to say that people overall seem very happy with the way things are going at Island Yacht Club. <coughs> super, super happy with that. But I think what the, the killer, you know, slide here is, you know, why do people join IYC? And um, I think... <laughs> you know the the $50 a year up to this point has obviously been very very effective it is the number one reason why people come to the club is because it is affordable um you know after that uh and by the way I will note that our membership fee is going up to $65 starting January 1 so one of the things we do have to do um as a club is before the end of the month, um, you know, send out an email and say, hey, I know we've been telling you about this for months now, but we formally have to tell you that we are raising prices by $15. Uh, and the reason why we're, you know, just quickly why we're raising those rates is because the cost of everything has really gone up in the past two years, like absolutely everything. We still have to put gas in our box boat uh, you know, to send it out so we could drop buoys and run races. Uh, we still have to put gas in our shared boat. Uh, we have really stepped up in the last year how we uh, reward our volunteers. You know, for a long time, uh, volunteering in real life was just a stressful thing to do with, in light of COVID. Uh, now people do really want to get together, volunteer and seek that connection, but we want to you know, we, we've been trying to do a better job at uh, making that more appealing. I mean, yes, you get to see your friends, um, but especially for roles like race committee where people sit on a deck in the cold uh, for three hours on a weekend, we want to make sure that those people do feel very much appreciated. Uh, and so, you know, we're trying to, although we have to now think about it within, you know, reasonable parameters, we do want to make sure that we do reward people for volunteering and all those all those things are not just paper trophies anymore. It's actually like rewarding people with merch and food and drink and things like that. And all those prices have gone up too. So anyway, that's in a nutshell. Uh, just because folks will ask later on why the price is going up. Um, and the other thing that we have, which is really a landmark of uh, Island Yacht Club is really the Women's Sailing Seminar. And this is something that, uh, you know, I was very proud to take into the 30th year. 
uh, this year uh, in partnership with Afterguard. Um, I do really feel like this is something that we want to continue and want in shape or form. Um, it's also a very expensive operation for us as well. And uh, the budget does come out of the Island Yacht Club budget. Um, so, you know, thankfully, um, we've been managed to uphold very, very good quality of this. But going forward, of course, uh, it's going to require still yet more uh, organization and, of course, budget. Um, what is interesting, just because we have you here, Patty, uh, I was always curious about how many people actually took us up on the um, club reciprocity. What we do now is we send out a letter and explain in very plain language um, what this means. And it means that you can't just storm into other people's clubs. It's all about uh, etiquette and cooperation and, you know, being being a good friend to the boating community. Uh, but, you know, people say that they love this idea of reciprocity. Uh, almost half our membership says that, you know, it's part of the reason why they joined. Um, in reality, I really don't know how many people actually take it up, but uh, maybe I have to ask that as a follow-up question uh, at some point in time. But yes, I have always appreciated uh, the hospitality I've received from other clubs. Uh, mostly I go to other clubs because I race, but um, maybe one day, maybe one day we'll cruise our, our sailboat and, you know, give it a go. So um, anyway, I did want to share that just mu that much, just so that, uh, you know, you guys get an understanding of where we are at. Uh, you know, we did get quite a bit of feedback to why people do, you know, what people are interested in at the club and there's a lot of cruising, there's a lot of racing, races, meeting up, races, racing, racing. <laughs> um, super, yeah, so, you know, uh, even though we are uh, a virtual club, um, things like racing and those sort of real life connections are kind of like indispensable to really who we are. So uh, anybody have any questions about that so far? about why people value the club, what's going on there. Hi, Eric, how are you doing? Hey, sorry for taking so long to get on. I'm down no, here you're doing great. SoCal. You are doing great. It's good to see you, mister. All right. Yep, down here in the heat in Southern California, been in shorts all day. Oh, what? Are you in Los Angeles? Yep. Oh, we feel so bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> you would if you knew what oh, the traffic was like yesterday. <laughs> Traffic down here is ridiculous. Yeah. I know. Well, I hope hopefully you're just staying at Maribel's, like with Maribel's fam, and you're not having to do cross city <clears throat> commutes because that is the worst. I'm gonna have to do a little bit on Friday, so we'll see. All right. Well, stay out. Well, hopefully, being a holiday week, it won't be the worst. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right. So um, let's get back into it. Um, with that all. With all that introduction, uh, it'll be great now to dig into um, the software part of it. I know that's why most of you guys are here, just to learn about how <coughs> it comes together. Um, and this has been just a very iterative process for us because, you know, as the club has grown, we've tried certain solutions, they haven't worked out, and then we've moved on to another thing, or we've found that we can get greater efficiency by doing something a little bit differently. Uh, my, my goals at the end of the day really are to create processes that uh, can be passed on to people fairly easily. Um, so ease of use is a big deal for me. Um, but then second to that, um, really just to reduce friction. Like I really don't want... I want people to get excited when they see a new member sign up for Island Yacht Club and not be like, oh, now I've got to do this other thing. Um, so it's been really about ease of use and re reducing friction. Um, so, you know, thankfully, I think all of you have the guide in front of you. As I mentioned, I was going to come back to this flowchart. Um, why I'm coming back to this is because... Uh, you know, I do want to talk about this quickly, uh, just in general. And then I do want to spend a bit of time just going through <coughs> a quick demo of uh, most of the software tools we use, just so you get a sense for um, how you 
can personally jump in and start mucking around. Uh, you know, basically, I'm going to do just a series of little demos here. Um, so at least if I you say, oh, you know, IYC is using this platform. What does this platform look like, do, et cetera? You have at least a little bit of information here. And maybe in the future, you can uh, spend a bit more time kicking the tires. But this is more like an introduction to uh, each of the pieces that put together that uh, this puzzle. So... Um, I do, first of all, want to just go through uh, some of the quick tasks with our website. We have a website builder called Weebly. Um, and then after that, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how merchandise works. And then after that, I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about memberships and what that flow looks like. And we'll touch on uh, Campaign Monitor as well, because that's kind of like the umbrella email tool we use for basically all our member white comms. Wow, Roz, this looks awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Way to put in some heavy labor into it. Man, look at oh, that. Um, I've got to tell you, some people have fun hobbies on weekends. Obviously, I don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I sail and I keyboard warrior. They're the two things I do. Um, I think you found your hobby. It's right here. <laughs> yeah, it's right here. Yeah. It's right here. Gosh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um. No, this was this was actually a bit of a hoot. So I, I had a good time doing this. All right, so let's jump into Weebly for a moment. Um, I do want to talk about that. So the idea, and we'll be coming back to this diagram a few times, uh, just so that we don't lose track of where we're at. Um, so um, Weebly is basically uh, what powers our website. And let me just hit share screen for a moment so you guys can see all this. Share our screen, Island Yacht Club. So here's our website, iyc.org. Uh, this is, you guys have probably seen it a million times over, but, you know, some of you may not have. Uh, this is what the front page looks like. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of nice little options here. Become a member. We've got some videos that show a bit about what we want, what we do, explains our history, etc. cetera. Um, I have not updated this yet, but I will. Actually, why don't we do that as a fun exercise together so that we're doing something productive tonight. Um, another part of it, which we'll touch on a little later, is you might notice the your account. Uh, this is actually uh, basically your account area as a y Island Yacht Club member. And under plans, it'll explain that you've signed up for things like annual membership for 2022, 2023. Uh, I've previously bought some content, this tied in Currents uh, San Francisco Bay is like uh, a cool webinar, which I've paid to, to watch effectively and uh, so on and so forth. And you can do things and I'm trying to encourage people to use this flow, like edit their profiles so that we have people's details on hand and stuff like that. I'll talk about this a bit more when we talk about memberships, but any which way it's, that's all to say that we have a fairly uh, a fairly uh, like a uh, happening kind of site where, um, you know, it isn't just a flat screen. You can actually interact uh, with the club to a degree. Uh, we also have a members area as well uh, where you can do things like access our crew list and see upcoming events and buy things, uh, you know. So, you know, we've got all these little touch points here that um, you can, this page in particular, you can only access if you're a member. Um, and so, you know, we have a combination of things like, uh, point of sale, like, you know, we can purchase things, you can sign up for memberships, you can do all sorts of stuff with the Island Yacht Club website. So what powers this is software called Weebly. Um, Weebly is, um, it's actually, uh, it was acquired by Square a few years ago. You guys might know Square because, uh, basically they create like point of sale hardware and software. Uh, they do like transactions and things. We actually started using Square a long time ago uh, to accept payments at the clubhouse bar. Um, so, you know, by default, we're quite biased towards solutions that plug in well with Square because, you know, you can do things like we can get a new piece of merch and then we can, 
you know, bring our iPad and our Square Reader to an event and sell it, accept credit cards and sell that merch, or we can, you know, sell tickets that way and stuff like that too. Um, for Square, they've always tried to find ways to make it easier to basically accept transactions. And one of them is by having a website builder and their own website software called Square Online. Uh, their website builder though is um, Weebly. And as I mentioned, we wanted to do something productive tonight. So not just show you this dashboard, but for instance, if you click edit site here, um, how easy it is to do things like update our website. So back to that value of like ease of use, I wanted to use software where you can just be like literally so you type something in like Eric is the best and hit publish. And, you know, everyone can see that change straight away. Uh, Eric is the best, but actually the thing we're going to do tonight is we are going to just quickly update this. So just to show you how, as you can see, this is the editor, by the way, and it looks near identical. like pretty much it, what you see is what you get with this software to use the old phrase. You know, this is the live side here. You can literally just be like, oh my God, we need to make an update right now. And you can go um, Z and then stuff Commodore Ross DeVries. And you can be like, oh, thank God, you know, uh, we've got that changed up. Awesome, awesome. Um, and you can hit publish. And then a minute later, basically, you've got new information on your site. So Weebly, it's it's super, super versatile. Um, this is all the pages that we have in Weebly. You can, you know, nest them differently. Um, you know, you can do things like create a page. You can hide it. Uh, you can make it uh, content gated using the member space software we are talking about earlier. Um, you can even create membership pages with it. Um, so for instance, like in the V1 of this website, we uh, did have like a member site that was sort of controlled specifically by Weebly. Uh, we did butt up to some limitations with it, namely not being able to time box how long people can be members for. Uh, and so we stepped away from that solution. But for a club that was just starting to, you know, look at this model, it might be something that they'd want to consider. The other thing is Weebly is super affordable too. It's like $29 a month. Um, and so, you know, it's pretty incredible in that and it lets you do things like run a pretty competent like online store. Um, and basically all you get charged for, for items that get sold via the store is you know, the square transaction fee, which is 2.9%. So anyway, here we go. Like for instance, the tides and currents uh, webinar, you can access that for $10. We have lots of nice little things like that. Um, I just remembered then that for instance, we shouldn't have this change of watch dinner that's already passed. If we want to like get rid of that specifically, all you have to do is like click on it in Weebly, hit minus, hit done, I hit publish and then the site is updated just like that. So in all, it's a nice piece of kit because, you know, it just lets you uh, push pro uh, like changes to the live site very, very quickly. Final thing I'll mention with Weebly is that um, we have a section here called events. Um, and we have, for instance, our Google calendar, uh, which is embedded. And as you can see, this is tonight's session on our calendar here. And if you click on any of these sessions and events, oops, should go to the live site. I'm sorry, I'm still in the editing environment here. Um, then you can do things like see the Zoom links and stuff like that. So we're just trying to put this information out here super easily. Um, you know, how to like sign up to races, stuff like that. Um, I haven't updated this for a while, but each of these events here is simply a blog post. So in Weebly, if I go back to the Weebly environment here, you'll see in the corner here, it says new post. So if you want to like post a new event on to our website, all you have to do is just do it like a blog post and be like, um, you know, winter racing begins, you know, today or whatever it might be. 
And then after here, if you want to put it together, you can drop images in uh, and like very quickly add images to, uh, you know, sorry, to the website. I don't have a good example right now here, but, you know, it's all very drag and drop. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to be able to hand it over to someone and just be like, hey, you don't need to know how to code. You just need to know how to, you know, hit post at the end of the day. And then that information is live on the side. So um, one thing Eileen was asking about was like, for instance, uh, if we wanted to uh, add, um, you know, a write up to a website, uh, what could we do? Um, I wouldn't necessarily do it under events. Um, just, just quickly, I'm going to discard that draft so I don't get confused later or somebody doesn't get confused. But we do have a page for racing specifically. And the fun thing about this is that, again, you can just like drop content in here. So if we did want to add a section that was like uh, learn more about our racing or, you know, what we could do is basically just add a piece of text uh, down here and we could be like write up from uh, Island Days Race 1. And we had a PDF file that our PRO gave us um, that we could link to. One thing we could do for something like if we wanted to do that, like we could copy and paste the text here, or what we could do is we could grab this file tile here. And when you click that, you can upload a file and you can upload it and store it on the site. So that's something to think about um, going forward. Um, you know, Eileen, just to address your point specifically, is that we could just like upload the PDF there and then that would be then available on the site for people to see. And then when you're done with all that, you just hit publish and you've got a resource that you can link to from your newsletter or wherever it might be. Yeah. Cool. All right. Any questions about Weebly before we move on to the next thing? Cool. All right. So that's that's a quick intro to uh, editing sites with Weebly. Again, when you log in, you just click edit site and then you go into that nice visual builder uh, and away you can go. I just want to touch quickly on how items work. So you saw on our online store um, when we went to, I'm just going to go to the store here. It's store. We have all these items here. We took one out. Uh, where do those items live? Um, Again, mentioning Weebly, it's very much like connected to the sort of Square ecosystem, which is all about e-commerce. If you click under here on this dashboard, items to site items, um, you can actually see all the items that we've offered historically, including how much stock we have. Um, so, you know, for instance, uh, the Island Yacht Club hat, which I showed you, it looks like we have 10 pieces of that left. So we look at inventory in here. Um, if you actually click on something like the hat, um, you go straight into this view where you can, you know, do things like change the pricing, um, the visibility of this item, um, whether like options for like shipping or pickup, um, and then stock levels as well, which is super important because you don't want to end up selling an item that you don't have any inventory for, uh, and so on and so forth. So you can, this is all you know, again, very much visual. Um, you know, it's, you can add images by just clicking on this and then finding images, etc. It's all pretty straightforward. So that's what items are. And items that are created here, um, I believe can also, you'll be visible on the square reader. Uh, so, you know, there is some sort of sync that happens between them as well, uh, which is pretty, pretty good, which is pretty good. But uh, you know, we've got a lot of historical items that we've just kept in here. Um, you know, for instance, our webinars that we've done previously, we did a whole series of webinars earlier in the year. Um, and this has been super easy to set up. Um, you know, literally, we've just made copies of previous ones, like duplicated the items, so previous webinars, um, and then, you know, plugged in different details and whatnot, and then made that visible on the site. And also it's super easy then to market the event on Facebook and other channels. Um, 
which is why we've managed to go gangbusters with webinars. Um, and I do hope, oops, I'm sorry, we can do that again in the future. Cool. Okay, any questions about items, all that? Cool, all right. So we've covered a lot of ground here, guys. This has been really fun. Um, so just going going back quickly, that was basically Weebly, in a nutshell, Weebly and Square, I should say. I'm not gonna dig too heavily into Square. Uh, you know, Square is really Square and Stripe. They're both sort of in their pure sense, uh, a way for us to process transactions, particularly by credit card. Uh, but you can also do by things like sending invoices as well. Um, it's, it's kind of unsexy work, but, um, it's good that there's software out there that does it for us. So, um, I'm going to dig into member space a little bit, um, next. And as you, as I, uh, I showed you before, we have this whole, your account section here. This is all member space. Uh, this is, you know, basically what does things like, you know, charges your credit card, pick, uh, asking you for member details, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, you know, as a point of reference, if you, if I log out of this, so I'm not, I don't have any, you know, I'm not logged in. This button simply becomes member login. If you click on that, um, you know, it'll ask you to log into your account. But if I am like a net new member, um, like for instance, I'll just show you that again. If I wanted to become a member, this is the experience you get. It's like the first, you know, asks your name. Uh, and then after that, basically it, it takes you to a screen that asks for your credit card details and more details about you as a potential member for Island Yacht Club. Um, so this is member space as it appears to our members. So Does that transaction run through Square or member space? So member space is actually a front for Stripe. So if I go through just quickly back to this thing here, to this flowchart here, um, what happens with membership? So with member space is that, you know, once you sign up for it as a member, there are two things that happen. First of all, there's Stripe quietly manages the transaction in the background and then eventually pushes that money to the bank. But then that membership form data goes to another tool called Zapier uh, that makes it a little, that makes it more public facing for us. So we'll talk about what this section in a second, uh, but uh, that's that's member space in a nutshell. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Hmm. So how, how come we don't use Square, I guess? It yeah. So it, unfortunately, member space has an exclusive arrangement with Stripe. So we only use ah, got it. for the credit card stuffs. We don't use it for anything else. Um, I would rather not use Stripe. But Fair enough. yeah, but we've been cornered into this in a way because member space actually works really well with Weebly. Um, it's just very simple to set up. Um, and yeah, that was basically it. These two are really a coupling here. Do they charge a fee like Square does? Yeah, they do. It's also, I'm trying to remember the fee breakdown. I'll get back to you on that, but I think the tr the credit card transaction fee is about the same, like the 2.9%. Oh. Yeah. But then we also have to pay so much to member space as well. Um, I think that's also in the vicinity of like $30 a month. Mm. All right. So uh, member space. And again, I'm not like, really i'm looking at i'd love to look at other solutions like that are more club, club centric uh but you know so far so good as far as member space uh goes from a usability point of view um so okay let's have a look at it i'm just going to add it to my browser here so member space i'm going to i've logged in i want to go check out island yacht club and uh, this is basically where you get dumped is the member space dashboard. Um, so the idea with membership with member space is that they have this concept of member plans and members. And member plans can be, you know, it could be 30, 90 days access to a video. Um, 
it can be access to a page, you know, like our members page, which has our code on it, our member uh, discount code on it and crew list and stuff. Okay. Um, it can be a one year membership to Island Yacht Club. Uh, it can be, um, you know, one year membership to the small boat program, um, renewing every year, you know, or on the 12 month anniversary from wherever you signed up. Uh, so the, the idea of plans is pretty versatile. Uh, hey, Roz. Yeah. Another quick question before yeah. you go on. Does it also include like um, where we did the dinner and collecting money for the dinner? Was that also handled through member space? No, no. So with the dinners, uh, for the tickets specifically, just going back to this, tickets, e.g. member dinner. <laughs> I was reading your mind here. Uh, that's specifically Weebly and Square. Yeah. Uh, good. So, but for things where it's kind of like the idea that you're, you're signing up for a limited period of time, that's what member space is better at. Um, mostly because it can allow you to uh, gate content for, you know, periods of time. Um, so, you know, in our dashboard here, uh, this is the aggregate, the 275 paid members. Um, this is the number of members that have a current member that are current on a membership plan. Um, we don't use this idea of trial members. The idea of trial members is like, again, for, you know, if I was trying to sell you some sort of content, and this is like, for instance, people that are doing things like selling a subscription to a series of videos might use trial memberships. But, you know, like the idea here is that, you know, you can give someone 30 days free potentially on the shared boat program. And then after that, you start getting charged. Like something like that could be a good, uh, you know, scenario for trial membership. Um, the free members thing, I use this quite liberally. Uh, what free members mean uh, is that in, in the context of Island Yacht Club is we have this idea that if you sign up after October 1st, you're actually eligible for uh the membership for the following year, right? So what I'll do is I'll create these free mem like these people that signed up in 2022, I'll add them to the 2023 plan, uh, member plan as a free membership. Um, so these are basically people that have just rolled over um, to the following year and there's 58 of those. Um, and then after that, things like page views, this is this comes down to like, if I have content like the members page, how many people have visited that members page, but then all the other pages too that uh, I have behind the membership. Um, the savings is based on, they have some very basic functionality at member space. Like if someone starts signing up for their membership, they get as far as adding their email address and a part, creating a password but then don't actually go through to the payment stage. Then they get a nudge email saying, Hey, did you, did, did something go wrong? And the theory here, it's, you know, in the e-commerce space, we call this abandoned cart. Uh, it's this idea that if someone gets halfway through making a purchase and then abandons it, uh, you can send them an email automatically, which says, just click on this link and we can, we can continue with your payment or your membership. And that has been pretty effective. Uh, I do get replies to those emails because people think they're actually from a real person. Um, and the membership by default, the emails are like really needy. They're like, hey, did something go wrong? Can we help you? Um, and people actually do write back and they're like, yeah, I'll come back to it next year or, you know, whatever it might be. But it's a, it's a fun way to like to sort of start a conversation with someone often that you don't know uh, who started signing up for IYC and then got distracted and decided to do something else. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you know, Stripe is Stripe. They basically handle all the payments. So um, you can actually jump in and have a look at um, payments over time. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get into the meat. Uh, so member plans, as I mentioned, it can be are a lot of different things to us. Right now we have three, two membership plans that are currently active being, oh, sorry, this is a free one, the two, rollover from 2022. And then this is the, the link that you get on the website. Finally, we have this content, this Tides and Currents. We have an arrangement with Cammy Richards, uh, who's a local sailing celebrity, that uh, he gets 20% of all proceeds from this. So far, we've raised him the equivalent of a free drink at the Boathouse Tavern. 
Um, so he's not going to get rich on this, but, you know, it was a nice thing we tried. Cool. Um, any questions about this so far? Cool. All right. Uh, final thing I'll show you. Oh, sorry. Two, other, two more things I'll show you is that you can create coupons. Um, so I should hide these, but we've created various coupons for, um, you know, people that, uh, want to join plans for free. This is all super secret stuff. So I'm going to skip to the next, which is members. Uh, and members is basically everybody that signed up. And as you can see, everybody who signed up for a plan is mostly at this point, the annual membership plans. Um, if you want to dig into that member, you can click on there and start seeing their details. This is a list of all the emails that they've received, invoices, you know, nudge emails, stuff like that, charges that have happened. And so why this is good is, you know, if somebody like Mary is like, hey, what date did I get charged for my membership? You can have a look here. Uh, if you need to refund the member, you can actually do that in Stripe. Um, you can actually, like, for instance, let's see, if you show details, you can get things like the charge ID. If you actually view the customer in Stripe, um, you can, uh, have to log into it. Okay. We'll do that another time. But, um, the idea is that, you know, you can, uh, process a refund in Stripe itself that happens once in a blue moon, but the best way to do it is to go by a member space and then go through the Stripe login. All right. Um, great. So this is really how things get mentioned in, like, uh, administer it in the background. And finally, you can add notes and things like that too. I very rarely need to use that, but um, that's how membership works. Cool. All right. Um, and then the next thing. So we were going to talk about uh, just very quickly Zapier, which is a tool that we use for pushing data around. So for any given member, um, you'll see if you go to show custom fields, you see that we have quite a bit of data that they've provided uh, on sign up, things like phone numbers, addresses, all that kind of good stuff. Um, as you can imagine, the day to day membership management stuff, or, you know, if we want to like just do a, a quick eyeball of like where people are, for instance, what their home port is, or their city, or state, or whatnot. Going through members one by one this way is obviously super tedious. It's like, you know, you'd be like, oh, okay, then I want to go see what, what Jeff is up to. Okay, good. I can see this. But, you know, obviously this is no good um, for someone who's printing membership cards. They obviously can't click through this type of stuff up, you know, or take this information in aggregate. Uh, so... What I've we've done to make things a little more um, easier from a lift perspective is gone. Why don't we just get all this information and stick it in a spreadsheet and make sure that spreadsheet stays automatically updated? Um, the other thing is, you know, we have a, a list of uh, these members in Campaign Monitor. In the olden days, we would be like, okay, every now and then, let's do an export. We can export all these people and we can import this list of email addresses into Campaign Monitor. Um, that sucks. It's also very time consuming. Um, so the idea is that we've got this software uh, called Zapier. And so, you know, just to show you what the end result is before we go into what Zapier does, just so that you guys, you know, can see the end result. Here's our 2023 uh, member list. And this is sort of very much formatted just almost identically to what you would get if you literally went into member space and you said export, you know, you can export this expanded file and the expanded file is basically, you know, each plan will have its own column, the member status, all that. The expanded file is effectively this spreadsheet here, which is a Google Sheets that has, you know, everything nicely formatted here and, you know, easy to read through. And importantly, I've thrown a few columns at the end that you don't have in member space, like the date that the membership card was sent to the person. 
so that, you know, we were sending cards up to 1119. We've got a few new members now that we have to catch up on, uh, these guys here. But, you know, I would consider this fairly up to date. But any which way, this is this is obviously something where if I was to jump into member space and hit export and a few days later hit export and then a few days later, it'll get really tedious and most likely I'd make a lot of mistakes. So we have this software called uh, Zapier that makes a lot of these problems go away. Uh, I put it here, it's API. API is basically a techie acronym for let's get some software to talk to some other software in a way that's kind of useful. Um, so what is Zapier? Uh, Zapier is basically what we would in the olden days call middleware. Uh, middleware, as I mentioned, is kind of like, let's get some software to talk to some other software. And in this case, before I jump into one of these zaps specifically, um, the idea here is this software actually knows how to talk to literally thousands of software applications and mostly the ones that you and I use every day. Um, and it basically allows you to just go, hey, I want to take that data out of one app and then throw it into another. So I showed you that example with the spreadsheet from MemberSpace. Uh, the idea is that in Zapier, you create these, these apps and you go, I want to do very specific data manipulation. Um, so what happens here is I've created this app called updated member profile to 2023 IYC members, Google Sheets. And this is these, these are the building blocks that I've put together. It goes, someone's updated or created a member profile in member space. The second step is it go, looks into my Google Sheets and goes, hey, does that person exist in Google Sheets already? And if they don't exist already, well, if they do, in, in those scenario that someone does exist, they'll update that row specifically, but if they don't exist, they'll create a new row in Google Sheets. So that's, you can imagine, you know, how you can do this with all sorts of different software. But the idea is that this is like a visual editor that basically runs in the background. So every time someone signs up for a membership in campaign, sorry, in member space slash Weebly, um, they get added to the Google Sheets automatically. Um, that's a lot of info. <laughs> but you know, um, you know, the horror show starts when you click on one of these things. And after that, you can start seeing like all the crazy stuff that I've done in terms of logic. But the idea is that. In short, that means member space. And what we're saying here is, hey, in this column, which is ID, put in an ID. In the column, which is first name, put in first name. In the column, that's last name, last name. So if you go back into the spreadsheet, ID, first name, last name, and it just is a way of going, okay, let's just push all that information from member space into here and update every time this happens. So this, it's currently on like a 15 minute timer. It'll just say, hey, is anything happening in member space? And then 15 minutes later, it'll be like, is anything happening in member space? And then if there's something has changed, it'll just update the spreadsheet straight away. All right. Um, was that a lot to, like crazy amount of info? I need to drink water for a second. All right, our brains haven't exploded yet. Okay. <laughs> How you doing, Pat? My ass. <laughs> yep, I know, Eric. Well, look, I just wanted to say pause it refreshes for a second. Um, you know, this this is all very iterative stuff that I've done over the course of two years, so I don't expect everyone to pick it up in exactly two minutes, okay, or in even ninety minutes. Uh, but. The good news is we're on the home stretch now. After this, it'll get we're on to the easy stuff. I promise you. I really do. Yeah, you better just not turn around because we're gonna put handcuffs on you. Yeah, I know. Fair enough, dude. It's okay, but at least you can see it. So far, I have not typed any code whatsoever. Literally, like any tool you go into, if you're wondering what I've done or what I've broken for that matter, you literally just have to like 
click into it and go. No, what I mean is we're going to need you to cipher through this stuff. Good Lord. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we're almost there. Um, Okay. So the easy stuff, right? This is the easy stuff. This is the easy (laughs) stuff. This is. is, It is. It gets, well, I'll put it this way. Once you've got your head over this concept uh, that a lot of this stuff is happening whilst we're sleeping. um, Yeah. Yeah, this is Zapier is great. You can do a yeah. lot of different things with it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool, guys. So mm-hmm. uh, final thing is campaign monitor, which uh, we will. Uh, let's see, just very quickly. Oh, no. Uh, campaign monitor. So um, as you can see here, Zapier uh, basically pushes uh, members into campaign monitor in Zapier, this like simply looks like, I just go back here, add subscriber and campaign monitor when new membership and member space. So as on Tim, um, and the idea here is that um, when there's a new membership, it'll basically add people to uh, this Island Yacht Club members list in particular. So the thing is about this is when uh you know for instance people's memberships expire uh in in the perfect world uh they should in theory be removed um from this members list uh to be honest with you i'm like always like second guessing uh whether or not that's the reality of it so you know at some point in march next year we do have to go on a bit of a a check slash delete of lapsed memberships, uh, but at least for the people that do join, we we can we're fairly we're confident that the list is you know they'll get added to this list and it's up to date. So, what is Island Yacht Club members? So let's see. If I go into Ross, quick question. Yes. So this is if when they get added into um, member space, mm-hmm. but in member space they can also update their email address right so do we have a do we have that currently too where mm-hmm. if they update that then it also updates campaign monitor yeah so that's an interesting one i might have to create a new or change the trigger okay I don't, so I, short answer is <clears throat> i don't think so because right now our event is new membership okay um but you can you can change the trigger so that you can update the profile and right. i think so that's, can we do that together we can do that together Okay, sounds good. Yeah, it'll take a few minutes. So let's do that after this. Oh, yeah, no, we can do that another day. Perfect. Okay. I like <clears throat> That's great. Because we have to make sure test these things too. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's Zapier. Let's go into Campaign Monitor then and have a look at that list specifically. So as we mentioned, we have this list called uh, Island Yacht Club Members. Um, and it is basically getting updated. Uh, So these people all just get added by Zapier. Most recent membership added here was 20th of November. To keep in mind is that if someone is already on this list, for instance, they were a member last year and they just upped upped their membership this year, like they renewed, um, it won't actually put their date as date subscribed. It'll just simply update them. So if we look into someone like Karen McDowell, um, this, she's actually been on this list for, actually, I thought she had been around a little bit longer, but, um, you know, for instance, she will, she's on a number of our lists already that we've created. Uh, here we go. She's received emails. As it turns out, she's got some software that opens emails repeatedly. This happens. Let me have a look at another person, actually, someone who I know has been around for a while, like myself, I should say, Roz. Let's see, Roz DeVries. Let's have a look at what I'm up to. But uh, here we go. So I've been on this list for a while now, since 2021. And, you know, basically I've stopped, I've pulled, uh, moved away from storing a, like a lot of people's information in campaign monitor i don't think it's the best place for it i think it's really good for storing things like your member id um 
and you know maybe who your second your plus two is on your membership but you know what is interesting to have a look at and what I get the most questions about is like you'll get people who'll be like I didn't receive your email is how did I know about a thing um, and you can actually use this report and campaign monitor to go, okay, well, cool. You actually did get the change of watch email. Uh, you clicked on a link even. So it's nice having this sort of information because, you know, it does sort of take a lot of the questions out of, you know, when people say, hey, you know, I didn't hear about this thing or I didn't hear about that thing. You know, you can actually have a look in campaign monitor and, you know, see what the the truth of it is. So, um, you know, list management, pretty straightforward. Again, you know, these are all sort of programmatically so sort of updated. I never have to jump into the lists and add, you know, uh, people manually. Zapier just does the work for me. Um, what most people, most of you guys will be spending your time in then as you're not managing lists so much is campaigns. And campaigns here is basically it's this is what you'll all see when you uh click on the campaigns tab uh all the email newsletters that we've sent to our membership so this is good for you know historical reasons being able to see uh you know what campaigns we've sent uh what dates that kind of thing you even get like a nice little preview here of what the campaigns look like so if you're wondering about that email that was sent you know three months ago or you know, next year we're wondering what was sent for nominating committee. Uh, it's all visible here, which is, uh, you know, very, very useful. You can even tag the campaigns. I use this for women's sailing seminar as well. So it's good to be able to like tag the campaigns and just pull up the campaigns you want, et cetera, et cetera. What I do for the most part um, when I'm sending newsletters is I will just grab a newsletter from a previous week and I will go copy and it'll think about it for a while. And then you can say, once it's done, you can edit draft. And then this will give you basically the previous email that you sent. Um, and the main things to think about here is when you click edit, you go into this visual editor and it's all just very, how do I put it? Like you can just type things here, you know, you can, uh, most of this uh, formatting is actually just sort of baked in. Um, it's, you know, something I've created. I've just added to a, a template effectively. Uh, just like member space, same idea. You drag a tile in. You can click on, you know, the image tile. You can browse images or you can upload your own. And one thing I should point out to you, Eileen, because if you're going to be using this in the future, you can actually do things like use re-images from here. So if I wanted to just find a generic image of a sailboat, uh, I could do that and just like dump it in. And it's a really nice sort of uh, free software, like free images that you can use. So, you know, this is nice and you can do things like very basic edits, crops as well. Uh, so a lot of these tools are sort of just baked into Campaign Monitor. It's very, very visual. Uh, so, you know, uh, very, very simple stuff to use. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to go too deep into it here tonight just because there are like, there's certain art and science as well. If, for instance, you want to show a message only to Campaign Monitor, sorry, to Island Yacht Club members, but not your general population. You can actually do that. Um, you'll get this little question here, who should see this? And you can do things like you can get super tricksy. You can just be like, hey, I just want to show this to Island Yacht Club members. And a campaign monitor will work out like who, for any given email address, what list they're on and go, okay, if you're an Island Yacht Club member, then cool, we'll show you this banner, um, you know, this is particularly useful for memberships. Like for instance, if you want to promote a members only webinar or, you know, even our member survey, right? Um, but you want to send the email newsletter to our whole database, which is a thousand people. Only, you know, 300 of that should see this banner, for instance. You can do that. Um, you can create these like subgroups of people as well. So for instance, this is all very historic stuff that I've got here, but 
you know, if I created a li list of people who signed up for a webinar, um, you could say literally, I just want to show this banner to these people that signed up for the webinar. Uh, so they call these segments, but they're just basically subgroups of these bigger groups here. All right. So <laughs> Eileen, do you have any questions in particular whilst I'm working through Campaign Monitor? Um, not really. I did. I was able to upload um, <clears throat> a couple pictures that I had and I figured out how to do the links. Um, when I first tried to upload the pictures, one of my pictures uploaded sideways. Oh, and well. I was trying to figure out how to rotate it. Right. So that is a thing. Um, I so just quickly, are you getting the uh, pictures off your iPhone? I emailed them to my computer and then uploaded them from the computer. And Got it. most um, of them were fine. It's just the the picture with me and Alice at first that was rotated and mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out how to change it. So I just deleted it and then like resized it mm -hmm. and then uploaded it again. <laughs> yeah. So the 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 real unfortunately these cropping tools they don't give you any sort of rotate or anything like that um when it comes to images in particular um that is a common issue that happens um for some reason it'll be rotated one way on a device but not like that's not actually its true orientation um Often what you have to do is you just got to rotate it using like preview if it's a Mac um, or some sort mm. of tool on your desktop and then save it and then upload it. That's happened to me before. And what I've done is I've exported the image first as like a JPEG and then saved it onto my computer and then tried uploading it. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's one thing. That is one thing. Just if you could do it, rotate it on your machine before uploading it to Campaign Monitor. Yeah. So in all these cases with these are all images of my iPhone, um, I've downloaded them as JPEGs. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Patty. I got to go to a 630 meeting, but thank you so much. Catch no up problem. with you later. Don't worry. I'll send you the recording after. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Yeah. So that's a common, that's a common way to fix that issue. Uh, basically these are all like exports of JPEGs and things like that, that I've uploaded. All right, so that's it. Um, this is obviously an old newsletter. This is not me. This should be you, Eileen. So, oh, final thing I should mention is that for video, just because we're getting videos of races, you can actually uh, throw a video tile in and you can add like a YouTube URL and it'll create a preview of the video. So mm -hmm. that's something that's super useful just because I know, Ed, you've taken a lot of video in the past of our races. If you can upload that video to YouTube, then it's super easy to add to the newsletter. All right. So those are the, those are the big scenarios. I know we're short on time, so um, I am going to say save it next. And obviously, I'm not going to send this newsletter, uh, but I did just want to give you at least some insight. So all the drafts here, you can see there's a test draft campaign, and there's the one I just created, edited just now. And you can just jump onto these in Campaign Monitor and go to the races. Okay, so um, that basically wraps up uh, the software side of things. Um, I don't want to dig too deeply into membership fulfillment. I think that's actually, you know, as far as the slide goes, uh, a lot of that is actually covered um, in the the guide, but I do want to make you aware of, uh, you know, the fact that we do have this whole section here about membership cards and letters. Um, you guys have seen the Google Sheets now with our member list, the 2023 members Google Sheets. So I link to it here uh, and mention it as like one component of this whole process. But things like the welcome letters uh, and whatnot, you can it's worth just spending a few minutes as having a look at this. I've even thrown in a tutorial like uh, about how, for instance, to do mail merges. Um, long story short, Prov, 
I'm going to be giving you a lot of these items when I see you. And yeah. we can, you know, we can, you know, print out five cards together. And then after that, you're going to be an expert. Sounds great. So this next weekend. That's great. Whenever you're very, very happy to hand over printers, I'm uh, sure papers, you, you name it. I'm but, sure you are. Yeah, very, very happy. <laughs> but long story short, it's uh, been documented. I'm not going to go put together membership cards right now because that yeah. would be use of your time. I'm going to try and talk Sherry into allowing me onto the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, the final thing I should say is working bees. So this wouldn't all work without our volunteers. Um, and Prov, this is, you know, I mentioned this to you earlier. This is your team, man. Like, you know, we do these working bees like two or three times a year. Eileen's now seen them. Um, you know, it's just a nice time together, actually. We just hang out and we go, we have 35 cards, which we want to send out right now. And as you can see, we have things like envelopes, uh, we have membership cards, we have stickers, we have letters, we've got Alice being very like very beautiful, doing the trifold here. Um, you know, the end result is a stack of uh, letters that Nathan has under his hot hands here, uh, where we bring our membership packs together and just stick them in the mail. The mailbox is literally next to the Boathouse Tavern. So it's a very, very good fulfillment center for us. Awesome. Um, better still, there's beer. So Maybe. that's it. Okay. Uh, great. So how do you guys feel? Are your brains all exploding? Oh, I no, think this is great. Together. Amazing. Sorry. Yeah. No, yeah, this is great. <laughs>